Three to four million babies are born each year in the United States, but many of our youngest patients within the first year of life are missing an essential component of well baby care. A significant number of treatable eye conditions, such as amblyopia, strabismus, and clinically significant refractive errors, will develop prior to age five. And many of these conditions may not be detected in primary health care vision screenings in time for proper management or treatment. Infancy is a program designed by the AOA that seeks to meet this need. Through the Infancy program, members of the AOA provide one-time comprehensive eye and vision assessments to infants 6 to 12 months of age at no cost. Dr. Andrea Thaw, a member of the clinical faculty at SUNY College of Optometry and one of the founders of the Infancy Program, shares her views on the importance of the program and how students can get involved. The Infancy Program. And when the program was created, we kept saying, if we could just change just one child's life, it would all be worthwhile. And then we got that famous phone call from Stacy Zellers, mother of Gracie. She had watched a segment on the Today Show when my colleague Dr. Scott Jens, one of the originating uh, founders, was on the show promoting the program when she was pregnant with Gracie. And somehow she remembered that when her child was between 6 and 12 months of age, she should take advantage of the infancy program. So she brought little Gracie in when Gracie was a little over 6 months old to our colleague, and it was his very first infancy exam that he had ever done. And he looked inside, and lo and behold, Gracie had a retinoblastoma. And our colleague literally saved Gracie's life. There were no signs of it. When you looked at pictures, there was no way of seeing that the child had the retinoblastoma. And that message that was left on our answering machine thanking us for it was one of the most heartfelt messages that we ever received. She actually came to the American Optometric Association's annual meeting to thank everyone. And she's just one of many. There have been three retinoblastoma cases that were found, multiple congenital glaucoma cases that were found, and probably most dramatically, kids with significantly high refractive error, minus 8, plus 11, children who were about to receive extensive occupational and physical therapy because they were not moving around and exploring their environment. And thanks to the effort of our colleagues, they got the glasses and correction that they need, and the children took off. Imagine what would have happened to those kids if they had not gotten the eye care they needed. Well, in order to be involved in the infancy program, all you have to do is be a member of the American Optometric Association and all of you students are already members of the AOA through the AOSA. And then what you have to do is just sign up, either by going to the AOA.org website or to go to infantc.org and you can sign up. We'll send you a whole packet of background information, history forms, and exam forms, and that's all it takes. Infancy provides an assessment clinical reporting form that is filled out for each exam. This form guides the exam and specifies the tests that will be performed. The case history forms a vital part of the infancy exam. Infancy provides an extensive case history form to be filled out by the parents, including questions about the pregnancy and delivery, the baby's medical history, and any family history of eye problems. It also asks if the parents have any concerns about their child's eyes or vision. In the fix and follow test, the examiner uses a small toy to check for fixation and fall motilities. It also provides a gross estimate of the acuity. Infants should be able to fixate a pen light or a toy, and the examiner should look for steady fixation, smooth eye movements, the absence of nystagmus, and competency. Now the head movements should be expected at this age, and it's normal for the infant to lose attention to the object and look away. Resistance to occlusion is an extension of fix and follow where the infant's eyes are alternately occluded with the examiner's fingers or thumb. If the infant shows a stronger resistance against one eye being occluded over the other, it can be inferred that the visual acuity is much poorer in the uncovered eye. The 10 vertical prism test is used to probe for amblyopia with a small angle strabismus. A 10 prism diopter prism is introduced base up before one eye and fixation is observed while the child is encouraged to view a toy of interest. A normal response is when the fixation is seen to spontaneously alternate between the two eyes or when the non-dominant eye holds well after occlusion of the dominant eye. An abnormal response is seen when fixation promptly reverts to the dominant eye or if the non-dominant eye only holds briefly after occlusion of the dominant eye. 
A quantitative measurement of visual acuity can be obtained using teller acuity cards and the preferential looking method. The examiner holds the cards at a specified test distance, usually 55 centimeters, and observes through a central hole on the card where the infant looks when the card is presented. The examiner then judges the highest spatial frequency to which the infant makes a clear looking response. Occlusion can be difficult you may only get a binocular result. If occlusion is attempted, the parent can hold their hand over the child's eye only while the card is being presented and remove their hand until the next card. If an interesting target is used, a unilateral cover test can be attempted at near, even at this age. However, if the cover test is unsuccessful, the next test of choice is the Hirschberg. A light is shown into the infant's eyes and the corneal reflexes are observed to determine if any large angle tropias are present. An estimate of the infant's convergence ability should also be obtained. By six months of age, the child should have a near point of to the nose, and by 12 months, the near point of convergence is expected to be adult-like. In the Bruckner test, light from a direct ophthalmoscope is directed so as to illuminate both eyes. An eye which is strabismic will have a brighter, wider reflex and sometimes the appearance of larger pupil than the fellow eye. The pupil evaluation is no different on an infant than any other patient. The pupils are normal in size by three months of age and reactive to light. Refractive status of the infant is found via a manifest retinoscopy measurement. Using lens racks or loose lenses, the result is found using Mohindra's method of turning off the room lights and finding the neutral lens at approximately 50 centimeter working distance with the infant fixating the retinoscope light. Minus 1.25 diopter is then added to the result to compensate for both the working distance and the child's tonic accommodation. At six months, refractive error is expected to be in plano plus or minus 1.25 diopter. By 12 months, it's expected to be within plus or minus 0.5 diopter of plano, with up to one diopter of variability. If it is determined to be necessary, additional retinoscopy may be performed, for example, with a cycloplegic. Visual fields can be estimated in infants with a simple confrontation test. A target, such as a small toy or a pen light covered by a finger, is brought from behind the child's head in an arc. This may require an assistant who stands behind the child. The examiner then notes when the child makes an eye or head movement toward the target and estimates the extent of the visual field. This is repeated for all the major meridians and can be performed either monocularly or binocularly. An infant's field can be expected to reach an adult size by 12 to 15 months. The anterior segment of the eye can be observed for any problems on an infant with a handheld slit lamp, a 10 to 20 diopter loop and pen light, or even a regular slit lamp, with the infant held in what is called a flying baby position by a standing parent. Interesting targets are required for the child to maintain fixation. While dilation is not required by infancy, it is strongly recommended for a thorough evaluation of the posterior segment. 2.5% phenylephrine and 0.5% tropicamide may be used safely to dilate a six-month-old infant. A BIO can be used to examine the posterior pole and periphery. If the dilation is not performed, the internal assessment can be performed using an ophthalmoscope. However, one of the best instruments for internal examination of an infant is the monocular indirect ophthalmoscope which provides a good view along with more comfortable working distance. Views may be difficult to get, but keep in mind that the prevalence of ocular disease within the pediatric population is less than 1%. The goal of the internal assessment is to rule out any sight-threatening or life-threatening conditions such as retinoblastoma. Despite the nation's present system of preschool vision screening, there exists a lack of understanding by the public of the importance of periodic professional eye and vision assessments. Unfortunately, during the course of their young lives, 
most children probably never see an eye care practitioner who can provide the kind of professional eye assessment necessary to identify critical eye and vision problems at an early age, explain those conditions to the parents, and provide the care necessary to correct those problems. Infancy fills the gap, helps to reduce the threat of serious vision impairments, and opens the door to healthy development and future academic success. Join doctors of optometry all across America in caring for the vision of our children. Become an infancy provider today